Hi guys, Chris Fern here, back with another action figure review. This time we have the Ultimate Spider-Man Marvel Legends Ultimate Spider-Woman. Uh, this is from the Hobgoblin Build-A-Figure series. Uh, I'm not usually a Marvel Legends collector, but I've been a big fan of the Ultimate Spider-Man line for a while now. And Ultimate Spider-Woman is one of my favorite characters to have come out of that series, so I was very excited to get my hands on this figure. I've had it for a little while now, but I haven't had a chance to record a review, so I figured I'd go ahead and do that. Uh, the box is fairly standard Marvel Legends box with standard one now. Uh, you've got Spider-Woman there. Uh, she doesn't come with any accessories, but, but she does come with the piece for the Hobgoblin Build-A-Figure. Uh, and if you flip around to the, bo uh, the back of the box, uh, she, she shares the packaging with the uh, Spider-Girl figure, and uh, down here at the bottom you can see the figures that you'd need to collect to make the Hobgoblin Build-A-Figure, which you can see here in the corner. Um, uh, this is the only one that I have because, like I said, I'm not a big, not a big uh, Marvel Legends collector. I've got a few, but I'm not... I'm not usually one to go out of my way looking for Marvel Legends. I do look at them occasionally for custom fodder, and I actually have one in mind for the for one of the figures from the recently announced uh, Doctor Strange Marvel Legends series. But I'll get to that when I actually get that figure. Uh, so I guess I'll go ahead and get her out of the box, and we can take a look at her. And here we have Jessica Drew, a.k.a. Ultimate Spider-Woman. Now, the back of the box doesn't give you any details on the character herself, but uh, this character was introduced in the Ultimate version of the clone arc, where she is essentially the Ultimate Ben Riley, uh, who there was a character named Ben Riley in that clone arc, but that had nothing to do with this character directly anyway. Uh, she was a female clone that was created through experimentation. All the male clones of Peter had various problems. Uh, accelerated aging, uh, spine degeneration, I think it was, uh, insanity, things like that. Uh, mutations gone awry as well was another one that popped up. Uh, from what I understand, the articulation is fairly standard for the uh, Marvel Legends line. Her head's on a ball joint, but it also is on a um, a hinge, so it can, you know, it's got a nice up and down motion on it. The up, not so much because of the hair, but the it's got a very far down motion. Uh, the shoulders are on a hinge, and they can swivel up pretty far. Um, full rotation. No uh, bicep swivel, but there is a swivel at the elbow. That's yeah. You know, so you get that you get that articulation, even though the joint itself isn't there where it normally is. Uh, the elbows are just single joints, but they do get a pretty decent range, a little over ninety degrees. The uh, hands have a swivel joint as well as a rotation. Uh, there's an ab crunch, which really doesn't do much for motion, but it does add an extra swivel. That's uh, what we get, I guess, instead of a waist swivel. Uh, bicep swivel, uh, or not bicep swivel, uh, thigh swivel. Um, 
side to side on the legs. Not super, mo you know, articulation there. I would like to have seen more articulation out of this figure, considering that it's a spider character. Uh, you can't get really dynamic spider poses from her. Uh, double jointed knees, boot cut, and then uh, ankle hinge as well as a slight ankle rocker. Not a big ankle rocker, but a slight ankle rocker. A little bit more going out than going in, oddly enough. You know, the articulation that you're really not going to need, yeah, you got more of that than the one that you actually could use. Um, you can get some, you know, kind of cool poses, but uh, you really kind of need a uh, display stand, something to support her so that you can get, you know, kind of cool aerial swinging poses, that sort of thing. Um, usually on my shelf I've got her posed, you know, with one fist up and then just kind of looking out. That's an alright pose. It looks dynamic enough, especially with the hair, which I really am a fan of the hair just swooping out like that. Gives a nice wind-blown look. And she stands fine, which I've had issues with some figures lately not wanting to stand up very well. Uh, I would have liked to have seen the figure have a slight metallic, you know, like a slight metallic color to the uh, suit. Instead, it's just this maroonish purple. That's like this, like, kind of reddish purple instead of, uh, instead of uh, metallic. Uh, in this in this comic series, it's got a slight metallic sheen to it, and I would have liked to have seen that reflected in the uh, figure itself. All of the white has a metallic look to it. It's got a slight, you know, glitter effect to it, but the uh, suit itself doesn't, and I was kind of disappointed by that. Uh, the Hobgoblin Build-A-Figure piece is just a torso piece. Uh, you plug the arms and legs onto it, then the uh, the head, and then you've got the area where the backpack goes for the uh, the wings and all that. Um, overall, I actually really like this figure. Uh, like I said, I'm not a huge collector of Marvel Legends figures, but you know these are pretty decent. I like the articulation. The uh, paint apps are usually really nice on the ones that I've gotten in the past, and. Uh, they're good for customizing as well because there's a lot of action figure lines that do six inch six inch lines so they're good for getting various types of heads that you might not be able to get in other like other series waves um it's a good place to turn for that uh they're not the they're not the greatest price or they're not the greatest I don't know, I guess bang for your buck, I guess, is the way to put it. They're, uh, they're pretty good. They're not, you know, you don't get loose joints. But you do get a lot of body reuse out of them. Uh, they use, like, this is, uh, this was originally made for, I believe, the Jubilee figure. The Jubilee Build-A-Figure from one of the waves way back. Uh, I believe they made this one for that, and then it's been reused several times. In fact, the, uh... The spider girl in this wave uses the exact same body. It's just painted differently. But overall, it's not a terrible figure. If you can find it at a decent price, I'd recommend picking it up. I picked it up primarily because I'm a fan of the character, so the figure was a must-have for me. But uh, if you're not a super fan of the figure or the character, then I wouldn't really recommend the figure unless you really want the hobgoblin. Um. Because otherwise you're just, you know, you're going to be getting a figure that's, you know, it's alright, but it's not a necessary filler, especially if you're not an Ultimate Comics fan. Uh, I am going to have to pick up the Ultimate Comics Peter Parker Spider-Man that's coming out, though, to go with this. Uh, they're getting ready to release that, I think, in December? Could be wrong on that. They had pictures of it at Toy Fair, so I may have to grab that one to go with the uh, Spider-Woman. And uh, you know that they've got they've also got an ultimate Miles Morales coming in that wave, and I'm half tempted to track down the the uh, Green Goblin Ultimate Green Goblin build a figure as well, but I'll have to debate on that one. 
But it's a pretty good figure overall. The Marvel Legends are pretty decent figures. Uh, I do wish they came with more accessories. Uh, like I said, she doesn't come with anything. I would have liked to have seen maybe like an alternate hand that maybe had some webs coming out of it. Because um, like, unlike Spider-Man, she shoots webbing out of her fingers instead of web shooters. She has organic webbing. Um, maybe an alternate head where it was, you know, Jessica Drew instead of the Spider Woman head. You know, that stuff like that would have been cool. But, you know, for most of the Marvel Legends lines, they don't have very good budgets. But Spider Man series apparently are ones that they get very high budgets for, so I don't know why they cut corners with some of the characters. But I guess they did give us an entirely new. Uh, the Spider-Man in this line has an entirely new, uh, entirely new body, if I remember correctly. This was the Pizza Spider-Man, I believe, and that one had um, a slim build body, much similar to the uh, how the Spider Woman's on the t slim teen body. They did a similar thing with the Spider-Man. They made a very slender body with a lot of articulation, more than normal Marvel Legends. Uh, it's got like a shoulder joints here so it's got like a I think they call them butterfly joints so the arms can move in and out so that may be why they tooled an entirely new body instead of just adding two other bodies so they figured they just cut corners on characters that they probably figured people weren't too eager for but jokes on them I ran out and bought this as soon as it was released because this was a must have for me but uh, if you're a fan of the spiders, you know, the various spider characters, if you're a fan of Jessica Drew from Ultimate, or if you're just a fan of Ultimate Spider-Man in general, I'd highly recommend picking this up. Or if you just want the Hobgoblin piece, then, you know, you can do that too. Although you can probably find that loose on eBay for cheaper than picking up the entire figure. But uh, I guess I will be back next time. I'm not sure what I'll be reviewing. I've got... A couple more things that I've had sidelined that I'd like to get reviews up of. And then I've got some costume projects that I'm going to start covering. And then uh, I've got another Your Toy Box that should be on the way in about a week or so. So I'm not sure which is going to be up next. But uh, stay tuned and I'll see you guys next time.